everybody, welcome back to a very exciting episode of the Vile Files Bachelorette Final Edition Recap coming at you right after uh, after the final fro- final froze. Froze? Rose? Boy, it's been a long night and it's only going to get longer. But we have a fantastic episode for you. I know we do because we have the one, the on- only returning Elizabeth Wagmeister from Variety. She is the pop culture queen and also very serious. Like you're both pop culture queen fanatic slash incredibly serious reporter doing various serious things. Multi-talented person. Bachelor fanatic. Bachelor fanatic, I guess, most importantly, <laughs> most as importantly. it relates to this episode. Uh, I guess, you know, pop, what did you say? Pop culture queen? Sure, I don't know. <laughs> I'll take it. Is that fine? And, and a, you know, every time that I, I say I'm a journalist, I have people come after me on Twitter and they're like, you don't have to say what you are. We know. So I'm glad you said it and, and not me. Yeah, it's a funny thing, the internet. It is. We were talking a lot about that while we were, we just watched the entire we just three hours together. Three hours. We sat here. We, you, we are coming at you hot. Right off, right off the Coming press. Coming in hot. Yeah, usually there's a whole day of having to stew after I, I watch the episode. Yes. Allie and Amanda joining us from the East Coast, staying up late. Uh, welcome. How are you ladies doing? Good. I didn't realize I lived in the East Coast, but I'm oh, happy to right. be there if you're, that need be. I'm sorry. Central time, <laughs> Minnesota. I'm actually flying through Minnesota to Milwaukee tomorrow. Do you need, should I pick you up from the airport? No, I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm going to be there long, but... Oh, okay. I will wave for wherever you're staying. Amanda, how you doing? In Boston, happy as a clam. Great, great. Well, we have a lot to break down before Brandon's literally on his way over, and which we'll be conducting that interview next. And so for the people listening, we're going to try to get these episodes out to you as fast as possible. My team will be staying up in the wee hours of the night working hard have patience with them and us uh but we will uh the brandon episode should be out later today if you're listening to this now uh and we will be excited to bring that to you but before we get to brandon let's talk about the finale let's talk about afr but uh before we even get to that i know we've been doing our our weekly bachelor hot goss bachelor nation you know, whatever, whatever, whatever it is. We're I know. Calling. I'm is like, any... is it hot goss? Is it tea? <laughs> is it tea? I don't know what the, the phrasing is. Yeah. And Allie's in charge. <laughs> it has become our resident gossip expert. So I love it. What do we got? All right. Allie. What's, what's the tea? What's on the menu? What are we breaking down? <laughs> I believe we need to start with the elephant in the room, Miss Tasha. She wasn't there tonight not there. due to COVID. She was exposed, so she didn't attend AFR. Um, She posted on her story just a few hours ago saying, quote, it's a little crazy here in New York, and I was recently exposed to COVID. So just as an abundance of caution for Michelle to have her night, as well as Caitlin and all the crew to produce this live finale tonight, I will not be there in person. As such, Caitlin was our primary host. And I thought she did a great job. She She really like rose to the occasion. Yeah. Yeah, very much so. I mean, it's it's a bummer for Tasha. What a huge opportunity missed. Um, But... You know, got to give Tasha credit for doing the right thing. I don't know if a lot of people in her position. I mean, she doesn't sound. Thankfully, she's COVID free, as as we know. She's only been exposed, and and hopefully that continues to, to stay the same. And unfortunate, she she couldn't make it. But yeah, I mean, I think I tweeted this as well. Like, it's one thing to host at the tell all, which is pre recorded. It takes like eight hours to record. It's condensed down to two hours. You you know, if you're hosting that, you could you can fuck up a bunch of times there it's like an actor you could just do 20 takes i mean they're not you know they hope they don't have to do 20 takes but you don't have to nail it like and you know when we interviewed chris harrison on this podcast a while back he spent a lot of time just talking about how proud he was of hosting afr and it being live and like what it takes to to accomplish that and the sense of pride he felt it's clearly a hard thing to do i've hosted uh, live red carpets uh, like that were streamed on the internet. This is ABC, the Bachelorette finale, and and props to Caitlin did an incredible job. There wasn't a single moment where you're thinking, 
oh, it's live. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't like, oh, let's, it's hard, but like she messed up just a little bit. Like, no, it was, you, you wouldn't know any different between uh, the tell-all that's recorded versus the live. And uh, you got to give props to, to Caitlin for stepping up and doing an amazing job. Yeah, no, Caitlin did an incredible job. And live TV is hard. We were talking about this, Nick, when we were watching. We've both done live TV and you can't mess up. You really have to think on the fly. And she did a great job, um, but I I did miss Tasha, and I'm sure she would have done a great job too. And it's really scary. I mean, just in the time we've been sitting here, we have a mutual friend who texted me to say that he has COVID. Who's in New York? Who's in New York? So it really is. It's going. Cr- I mean, just today I've had four people who I know. Thankfully, I have not seen. I have been at home. I have been safe. But it's everything's going around. I mean. Everyone seems to have COVID. Everybody is sick. The flu is going around. <laughs> the flu is going around. Yeah, the, the cold. So, yeah, yeah. So I'm glad that Tasha was staying put and staying safe. And I hope that her exposure was just that and that she doesn't get it. And we missed her. And Caitlin did did a great job. Did an amazing job. Yeah. Speaking of Caitlin, this is a perfect transition. I have two points on Miss Caitlin. Um, <laughs> first off. firecracker up too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Caitlin reacted to her lovely ex fiance, Sean Booth, um, who apparently said that their relationship wasn't, quote, true love. Uh, and Caitlin said, quote, and I was just confused by that because it's been three years and I thought maybe he would just, you know, we'd want each other to be happy. And she said later in that same interview that he seemed a bit bitter for bringing up their relationship this much later, because obviously, you know, she's gone on and had such success is now engaged, very happy. And it, it felt like kind of a weird recurrence, if I'm being honest. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay, so I'm just finding out about this. I had Ooh, not. Yeah, yeah I, I had not heard about Sean's comments. I didn't I, know. I, I saw it on an Us Weekly uh, article. OK, yeah. so I, I was not reading Us Weekly. I was, yeah. You know, a little busy doing the real news. <laughs> As, uh, as you said, real it was sent but, to me by a friend, but, to be honest. Yeah. But I mean, I couldn't agree with her more. So first of all, I'm going to be really shady. But who is interviewing Sean Booth and, and why? <laughs> um, but I agree there, with her. Like, there is a segment of Bachelor Nation that stands some Sean Booth. By the way, I, I loved him when he was on the show, but haven't heard that name in a while. Wait, so, I mean, if you love Sean, I don't know. Oh, um, yeah, I know. Because I, I know. know. There were usually were two sides. Yeah. I anyway, know. I know. We, we won't get into that. That's another podcast. But I completely agree with Caitlin and her commentary. Why is he talking about it now? What do you gain from that other than us talking about it? We talk a lot about relationships on this podcast and how the opposite of, of love is indifference. And, and he doesn't sound indifferent about the relationship. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's what I'd say. Can I can I start some hot goss and ask Nick a question and put him on the spot? Okay. So speaking of you know friendly exes or, or not so friendly exes, since since you were saying that Caitlin did such a great job, have you talked to her? Like, are you what what sort of speaking terms are you guys on? And do you regularly text? No, we do not regularly text. Okay. At, at all. Okay. Uh, we are. I think there's a strong mutual respect that Caitlin and I have for each other. Um, and I think, you know, and we've talked about this, Caitlin came on the podcast and when, when she was dating Sean. Mm-hmm. By the way, for the record, of course, I'm team Nick. <laughs> Caitlin and I weren't on the, the, it was a contentious relationship the whole time she was dating Sean. And, uh, and we, again, we've, we've talked about this. And so since her and Sean have broken up and, and she owned it, like she can't just blame Sean for everything, you know, and she's a person, but I think since that's been over, um, I think we appreciate having what's what began as like civil coming from contentious while she was dating Sean to, you know, I think if you've been in as long as Ken and I have, um, there's a mutual respect. Uh, we've, we've had a lot of the same ups and downs and every once in a while there might be something we reach out to. I, I, I did, uh, re- text her before FR started and, and wished her good luck and said, she'll do great. And she talked about how nervous she was. And that was so nice of you. She did not, uh, she, I don't, she didn't sound nervous at all. So yeah, she said, uh, what did I say? Yeah. What did she say? Ooh, we are breaking news here. We are in the business of breaking news <laughs> what did <I> say? <laughs> and starting, starting the hot goss. Uh, it's a big opportunity. Good luck tonight. You will be great. 
She said, I'm so nervous in all caps. And then she said, thank you. I said, don't be, you'll be great. You're the best when you're having fun, enjoy it. And you'll be just fine. And she said, got it. Thank you. Got it. <laughs> That's what you say to an ex. You're like, you okay, thanks it. for the nice text. Got it. No. So That's great. yeah, we, uh, I talk more to Jay to with Jason than I do, mm -hmm. uh, Caitlin. Okay. Uh, he's in a, we're in the same fantasy football league. Oh, got it. Um, and so, uh, yeah, but it's, it's nice to have what I, I think is a strong, just mutual respect. And I consider her a friend, but we do, we don't like on the regular right. talk. That's great though. I yeah. love that you guys have this kind of a friendship. You know, with like Ben, I mean, I mean Ashley and Jared have just been close friends mm -hmm. and like Ben's a close friend, but you know, not only do you have the friendships, but it's nice um, to have a support system. And again, like, it's not like Caitlin and I are like leaning on each other, but I think there's a level of trust and respect that uh, it's nice to just once in a great while, we will vent to each other about certain things in our uh, world. Know, world. Well, you guys, you really, the, like no one has been through the experience that the two of you have. So you have a common understanding. I, I was literally just thinking, I have so many more questions to ask you about all of the people you love and maybe don't love in Bachelor Nation. And then I realized, wait, this is not my interview. What am I doing? Some other time. That, that could, I, can, I'll I, have, that'll be another time. I, I have a lot of I questions for you. I can be completely honest about that, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll stop I asking the questions. Everyone. I everyone. I am the guest today. I'm not the interviewer, but I have a lot of questions for you. There's people I like. There's people I love. There's people I like. And there's people I wish made better choices. Mm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Great answer. When your online checking account balance is running low, the last thing you need is a $33 overdraft fee. Overdraft fees have gotten way out of hand, and in 2019, traditional banks took $11 billion in overdraft fees. That seems like a lot of money. Chime does things differently. Chime is an award-winning app and debit card that has saved its members more than $10 billion in overdraft fees with SpotMe fee-free overdraft. Eligible members can overdraft up to $200 on debit card purchases and cash withdrawals with absolutely no fees. Now you deserve to have financial peace of mind. Join the millions of Americans already loving Chime. Sign up today. It only takes two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started today at Chime.com slash V-I-A-L-L. -L. That is Chime.com slash V-I-A-L-L. -L. Banking services provided by and debit card issued by the Bank Corp of Stride Bank N.A. Ember members FDIC. Spot me eligibility requirements apply. Overdraft only applies to debit card purchases and cash withdrawals. Limits start at $20 and may be increased up to 200 by Chime. Chime member overdraft fee savings based on eligible members use of Spot me versus 33 dollar average overdraft fee overdraft fee data based on bank rate checking account survey and crl june 2020 overdraft fees report should we continue on our caitlin train There's because more. she made a comment uh you know we broke down the whole caitlin sliding into morgan's dms last week and uh, talking yes. about mental all mm -hmm. uh and she went on the here for the right reasons podcast and made a comment about the whole men tell all and talking with Tasha before filming started for that. So I didn't know if anyone wanted to know what she said. What did she say? She said, and I quote, I saw her in the trailer. So upset. She was having anxiety. And I was like, quote, you don't have to address this if you don't want to, but I think if you want to have your own voice and be able to like, just share how you're feeling, it's up to you. End quote. I mean, at the end of the day, as long as she was now, I say comfortable, she wasn't comfortable with it but she wanted to address it. And so we had to put it in there somewhere. And honestly, I was just really proud of how she handled everything because it felt like a true professional. I mean, I don't know. I feel like we've talked about this topic plenty. More than anything, I think the biggest takeaway is, like, I feel bad for Caitlin because like, she clearly was put in the situation at Men Tell All, right? Whatever. We get why the producers would want Tasha to talk about this, right? It's a promotable moment. She not only was hosting Men Tell All, but she was recently uh, their bachelorette. And like how, what, how convenient to have your most recent bachelorette, other than like Katie, uh, be like there to talk about her breakup. Like, great. You know, they loved, I so I get why they want to do that. Caitlin's put on the spot. And I guess to my surprise, what I realized this week after like we were, we were all trying to figure out like, why the fuck would Caitlin text Morgan this Morgan? I don't think they're friends. It seemed odd. 
but it was like she it, it's what i realized that it, i don't know if it was tasteless super fans or stands but like it's is this apparently caitlin was getting shit on because they like they thought that like caitlin like went rogue at the tell-all and said you know what forget about the tell-all uh-huh. Taysha, as if yeah. like Kate, like clearly that didn't happen so right like, like we're talking about live tv that was not live tv nothing is rogue it's all very planned all and very yeah very all, s- s- scripted not sc- i don't know if i'd say scripted, scripted but it's there's the beats of the show they they both obviously knew that they were going to address the breakup and i would imagine that it's something that taisha wanted to address and to me it makes perfect sense like this is your platform you your platform is the world of the bachelor and the bachelorette you just had a breakup that is playing out in the headlines that you addressed on your social media why wouldn't you address your fans when you're right there with them live at home and in the studio so i totally understood why she spoke about it and i mean look breakups are hard enough let alone when you're on a reality show and then when you're you have all this pressure hosting the show on social media so i honestly i thought it was no big deal that she addressed it and i thought it made a lot of sense yeah i don't think anyone really thought it was a big deal it made sense the whole conversation has been centered around like it just felt staged and inauthentic it wasn't the most authentic moment and like honestly whatever that's why like for me the biggest takeaway is like because then here caitlin's doing another podcast clearly she's like promoting her dancing with the stars stewart mm-hmm. stewart she's being asked about it and there's one thing i've had to learn the hard way uh in this space is that when something is written about you especially mm-hmm. if you don't like it your instincts are naturally to want to defend defend or say your side and it's not it's unless you need to if you don't love the story it's always better to let the story die than to um defend yourself because defending yourself will only get people talking about the story amplifies it and here we are three weeks later after this event Mm -hmm. and it's still being discussed because it just you know it seems like listen nothing has changed my opinion after you hear this certain things don't add up to me in terms of like i get that she had anxiety or whatever but like you know for me it was more like i said before this was me it was more about like the producers i get why they did it i get why taisha would say yes to it but uh she was hired to be a host and i think why the audience You know, it's interesting because like nothing will get you in more trouble. Like, you know, when you talk about villainettes and like I'm getting off a little off subject here, but like people don't like to be uh, misled, Mm -hmm. you know, like the 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 Brandons and Paradise, Mm -hmm. you know, when they think one thing about you and then realize something else. Yeah. And this was nothing like that, but Mm -hmm. people were watching Caitlin and Tasha as hosts. Mm -hmm. And then in the middle of the episode, it was like, I'm the bachelorette. And I think people struggled watching with that and that's why it seemed inauthentic and knowing how that world works and the producers Mm -hmm. saying things like hey listen if you uh, you know if you need to walk off stage it's it's totally fine i'm not telling you what to do and you don't have to do it and whatever and it's just like i i just feel like if 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 she was that upset about it Mm -hmm. she could have just not talked about it for me i'm first of all like whatever second of all i'm sure she was incredibly emotional about it and upset about it because she just went through a breakup that's playing out publicly and for me i'm like well of of course they're gonna talk about it to your point like this is a show the producers want to be able to promote it they teased it top of show and i also think you know would you have said yes to it though if you were hired to be a host i think if i wanted to talk about it like if i felt like it was something that my fans wanted to hear. Because I think that some fans of Bachelor yeah, Nation probably you, did want to hear, right? You feel responsible. Right. Yeah, people want me to talk right. about it. Why not talk but about also, it But also, I just, I don't understand why this even, like, became a big deal. <laughs> like, I, I don't, but it's like, we've seen this before. <laughs> like, why are we talking about any of this stuff? Right. You know? No, no, but we've seen this before. Like, when, I'm trying to think of an example, but on on talk shows, right? Like, if you have your own show and then there's stuff that's being said about you, like Ellen, right? Like, when there was stuff said, she addressed it on her show. Wendy Williams, when there was stuff being said about her personal life, she addressed it on her show. Like, I feel like people do that because they're saying, I know you're talking about me and I know this is playing out in the tabloids. So I have my own show. My name's on the show. I'm going to speak about it. So I, I, I understood that, but I also, like... 
so what if it was planned? Of course it was planned. The show, is, everything's planned. When I watched it, I was like, eh, whatever. And then, but you know, here, and, and, here but we are. Talking people, about it. People, they, that was the big discussion. I think, you know, again, like I took for granted that it wasn't obvious that clearly Caitlin didn't like go rogue on Tasha, but there, are, I guess for some people watching it, I mean, the number one question I get if, if someone watches a, walks up to me and asks about the show is, is it real? Is it scripted? Is it staged? It is a fascination people have. And so anything around, um, you know, the authenticity of feelings mm -hmm. as it relates to the show, people are just hyper, hypersensitive. And I think that's why it was even a discussion because, you know, people like will hate watch the show. They'll love watch the show. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, ca as cast members, we get accused of bad acting mm -hmm. or, you know, maybe good acting sometimes or, or, or if you find out if it's, if it's revealed on the show that you were acting, then you're crucified. Right. For, like the audience has been trained to, to like have these like hypersensitive, like, you know, awareness for like inauthenticity. So w when they see something, they need to know it, it, like, right? what happened like behind why, the scenes. Yeah. Yes. Why did this feel off? And right. I think that's the, that I'm thinking that's the fascination. Probably. And I do think that, you know, I said, of course it was planned just because something's planned. And I'm not talking about this instance. I'm saying in general with The Bachelor or with with really any reality show, just because something's planned doesn't mean it's fake because you, you you know it's a tv show it has to be produced in some sense you can't just let people run wild especially when you're doing a live show in front of a live audience like there has to be some sort of rundown and some sort of skeleton structure yeah. and then things can happen so plan doesn't mean fake necessarily it's, it's staged and you're right not necessarily it's just it can yeah. be it can be it fake. can be it's like it's all of the above and yes. like you know, it's one of those things too. Like I made, I, I shared like a couple, like I said, and I repeated myself that like my guess was that a producer at some point, they agreed to talk about it. And at some point they said, Hey, and if you, if you get emotional, it's okay to walk off. Right. So like saying something like that, isn't telling them what to do. They're not saying you have to do it. They're just saying like, listen, I'm once again, reminding you that whatever it is you want to feel, you feel. Now, sometimes that leads to incredibly authentic feelings, and sometimes it leads to cast people thinking, well, what what do they mean by that, and what should I do? And sometimes we, you know what I'm saying? You get almost too self-aware of the situation you find yourself in. Right. And you play up your emotions. A hundred of people on The Bachelor have done that. I am sure I've done that at times. I was going to say, you have more insight yeah. than anyone so, on this. Um, but those things happen. And right. when and when the audience watches it, they watch it with a hypercritical eye to see if they right. can catch that inauthenticity. Right. The one thing that I will say on this that I do care about is that I don't think that Caitlin should be getting any hate for quote Twilight. unquote setting her up. Twilight. Like of course like I first of all, I thought that Caitlin's comments about Tasha were very nice, where she was saying, like, I was with her before and she was beside herself. And like that's two girls who are talking before and they know what's going on with the breakup and with emotions running high. So it's not like Caitlin put her on the spot. It was like, by the way, on national television, you're going to talk about this. Like they knew that they were going to talk about it. So neither of them, in my opinion, should be getting hate for that moment. Going along on our train of former bachelorettes making headlines, did everyone see that Hannah Brown's future sister-in-law oh, is yeah. Jed yeah. Wyatt's ex-girlfriend? That is fucking wild. I don't even understand That's this. wild. I mean, what do you say? How, how did this happen? So I saw that yesterday and I DM'd a link to at least 10 of my friends that were all obsessed with The Bachelor. I was like, did I miss something? Like how, I mean, look, I know that Bachelor Nation is very incestuous, but how does this happen? And then here's the best part. I'm not going to name the person because I don't want to give them a shout out without permission. But then one of my friends said to me, she said, oh my gosh, I just saw Hannah this weekend in Venice, I think, like at a restaurant. And they said she looked kind of bummed. Like, I wonder if that's why. I thought I saw something like uh, that they don't follow each other. Mm. Like Hannah and, and her now soon-to-be sister-in-law. So, so Hannah...
people were like, Hannah didn't like the engagement post that Haley Stevens, the ex-girlfriend now potentially sister-in-law posted. Uh, but they also don't follow each other. So I'm not sure if she would have gone out of her way to go like a photo of this girl, if she's not even willing to follow her. I don't think that's not nothing. I mean, yeah, it's kind of weird not to follow your future sister-in-law, right? Yeah. But even more tea is the fact that Jed went on Instagram and on his story was like, you know, everyone's been tagging me and, you know, I've had several tabloids reach out to me for comment (laughs) And the only thing I have to say, and I guess it's more of a question, is does he know he's engaged? It was, and like, I was like, like, like a really, is it really <sighs> like I feel I guess bad for him at this point. I he's don't. gotta learn to let it go. It was an attempt at a joke. I don't know if it landed. It didn't. Uh <laughs> I yeah. And also like he just got he has to let it go. He because has to let it I'm go. sure like Jed has as many people I've met in this world like Jed who like they don't just accept what they did and I am sure I have no doubt that Jed took a beating from bachelor mm-hmm. nation he didn't deserve mm-hmm. because no one deserves to be like crucified for going on this show right right yes so, it's like, a tv show that's we'll keep why it in perspective. It, yes. he didn't deserve that and I know and but, I but have I'm been still hard mad at him. And I've been hard on him but like at the same time like he did do the thing and this whole right. idea of like whether he was dating or not dating, like I know enough that like he he got himself in a situation and instead of and I've had plenty of conversations with producers about this at any point, and I think I probably said this on the show, had Jed just been like, Listen, guys, I'm coming on the show, I don't know what to expect. Fuck, right? Mm-hmm. My guitar, I thought I'd sing some songs and there's this girl I was hanging out with. I'm sure you guys heard this story before, you know? And, like, she's not my girlfriend, but, like, like, I know she's, like, expecting me to call her when I'm done. And now I'm in love with this Hannah girl. Like, help me out. And because he was her favorite, they would have protected him. Mm-hmm. You know, they would have figured it out, you know? But he just kept lying to everybody. Mm-hmm. And he clearly lied to Hannah. And, like, avoided this girl and i'm sure they weren't boyfriend and girlfriend i believe that but like he also wasn't innocent so just own that and mm -hmm. move on i couldn't agree with you more but for the sake of not shitting on something that he did in the past let's just talk about the present because i have an issue with what he posted on on instagram other than it being a bad joke yeah no one has to say all these tabloids are reaching out to me like, no one cares but you. Like, it's fine. Do you know what I mean? Like, you don't have to call attention to right, the fact yeah. that people want to interview you. So, first of all, as we know, Hannah just came out with her book and just did a big press tour. And he was obviously heavily written about in that was book. It? Yes. So, you know, maybe he didn't like that, that there was this kind of big wave of press where his name was brought up again. But... I just, you know, kind of to your point, to bring this back to something that you said, when there's a story that involves you, the best thing to do is stay silent unless you want it to be amplified. So or, just by- or, or sometimes you, you, it's responsible for you to address something given its level of seriousness, none of which usually happens in Bachelor Nation. <laughs> right, right. But I feel like after, whether it's, you know, founded or unfounded, that he has a lot of haters, you don't have to insert yourself again. No. Like people already don't like you in well, Bachelor Nation. Like, like why it, drum it up again? Did he think that he would post this thing and everyone would be like, now nah, we're team <laughs> right. Jed. Right. You know what? Yes. No, Jed popped up and people were like, nah, I still fucking hate you. Like if he wanted to do, if he wanted to insert himself, he should have just done a really benign, like, I don't even know if it would have been a joke, but he could have just been like, yep, I've seen the news or something like that. Or he could have even just said like, congratulations to the happy couple. Like that would have been a not funny, funny thing. You're right. Uh, and that's all right. And yeah, it, there's a little like, yeah. I can it, be it, wrong too. It's no, fine. no, no, you're wrong, right. <laughs> Cause like there's a, like, it, well, we were just talking about Sean in terms of like, yeah, it's like, what's, you wonder why people decide to bring up old things knowing especially when it doesn't come across clearly the way they hope because like he says it and like who reads this and goes team sean 
I mean, it's not even Team Sean or Team... K- there is no Team Kaylee right. and Team Sean anymore. Right. So, like, why are you asking us to pick a side for something we've all moved on Exactly. For? You know? Right. Um, like, like, we weren't even talking about it until you brought it up, which, by the way, is the very reason why they brought and, it up. And, and, and <laughs> like, also, got, like, Sean and Caitlin dated for, like, two, like three years. Three well, I years. Know. That's a long than some marriages. I know. So like, it sadly, also makes him yes. look crazy for saying it's not true love. Like that looks bad on you too, dude. Yeah. Like what is right. that? Like Vanessa and I dated for nine months, right? None of which was particularly healthy. We've talked about this. We've acknowledged that like we, it, it was just a tough situation. We just weren't a good match, whatever. But like it were, there were real mm-hmm. feelings. She was right. my real girlfriend. Like right. to come out and be like, I, oh, you know, like it was all f- like, fa- right. like what the fuck? Well, like, it's, all, it's just rude. Like you should have some respect for a person that was in your life for three years. For three years after the show. And here's the thing: just because you're a public figure doesn't mean that you have license to say whatever you want. Like, sure. I get it. You came up in this world of fame and on reality TV. But to your point, like that was a real relationship with real feelings for many years. She's a real person just because she happens to be a real person with a big following who is famous doesn't mean you get to just talk about her. Like think about in the real world. If you weren't famous, who does that? It's weird. It's weird. I don't think it's cool. Back to Jed. Yes. Despite we, I agree with everything you said. It's like, why bother? It doesn't look good. You're not, you're mm-hmm. not garnering the reaction I know you want. But assuming Jed did nothing, mm-hmm. so given that Haley was doing whatever with Jed and uh-huh. is now engaged in Hannah Brown's brother, in any way, are we like, maybe Jed? Like, maybe she was like. I mean, I have a lot of questions. It's not a coincidence. You know what I'm saying? Like, I always, I, I do get defensive of my peers who go on the show and the exes who be like, they broke up with me to go on the show. It's just like, they broke up with you three months before they were casted. They didn't break up with you going, you know, it's, it's, it's mm-hmm. always, it's, it, it is for the attention. Mm-hmm. Or they hate that their ex, you know, the person who left them is now, you know, a fan favorite. Right. It's annoying. Right. So, you know, despite Jed lying about it, like, I didn't like, I didn't have like the highest, I didn't know who this person was, but whoever she was, I wasn't like poor girl. I was right. like, you're in on it. Mm-hmm. And now she's engaged to Hannah Brown's brother. Like, I mean, she's not exactly trying to be anonymous. Yeah. <laughs> like, and this doesn't just happen. Like there's a lot of people in the world. Right. No, you don't How just do you like, just, oh my God, who are, are you? Oh my God. Like, right. you, are you Hannah Brown's brother? Right. Like, so by the way, like in my opinion, no one in this situation really comes off totally clean so yes i was hating on jed but that's because i watched his season and i was already hating on him for a matter of years but yeah like how did she meet him if i'm hannah i i, I she has a right to be annoyed for of sure of course no like, I mean, that's one of the few times where you want to say you met on tinder you're like i swear right. we just met on tinder <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's so true. I mean, no, she like probably followed him for a while and like into a coffee shop. Like, right. oh my God, how what a coincidence we met. But <laughs> here's the funny thing. If they did become good friends, like they could have some really juicy conversations about this common. I'm trying to make sure I'm doing this web in correctly in my head. But yeah, like I need a, a family tree in front of me. I mean, yeah, but, who, we don't I don't you know nothing about this. So it, maybe Haley is the coolest per the coolest right? hang and like. Her and Hannah head off, and they just like become best friends, even though they assume they yeah. would hate each other. And by the way, maybe they don't follow each other on Instagram, and it means nothing. Maybe they're like, "Hey, like, I, no, it doesn't mean nothing." <laughs> I know. No, we're being way. Too, just, you're being way too generous. I'm now. just. I'm. I, I'm putting out a theory. Like, yeah. what if they're really close, and then they're like, "We don't even want to <laughs> yeah. enter this in the public fray." Not so, a chance. <laughs> no, not a chance. No, I think it's possible. It's possible, like. Hannah could be like, I don't want to like this person. That happens a lot. You don't want to like someone. You meet them. You're like, fuck, I like you. Right. You know? But I don't think that's what's going on. I really want to uh, hear Hannah's take on this. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm very invested. I, she's got to be so annoyed. I, I need to know how they met. I want to know if her and Hannah are friends. Do they hate each other? What do they talk about? <laughs> if anyone from Hannah Brown's team is listening to this podcast, that would be a great way to do like a little excerpt and like a, a new edition of her book oh yeah add in a chapter we just did i would buy it fuck Haley. <laughs> like, <what> is- <laughs> so we just did a, a great hannah just did a Stop great writing interview. my coattails like what is- <laughs> um hannah just did a great interview with us at variety about her book and i wish we didn't do it yet because i 
you know right. maybe we'll we'll set up another interview to find yeah, if out nothing about else, this she's like you know what if you're gonna like kind of like just do this to me mm -hmm. couldn't you have done this a month ago right but you're so right that i mean she could release the hardcover right and then have an extra chapter yeah mm -hmm. which is only good if it's she hates her right because if she know. comes up with an extra chapter be like oh it turns out she's the best we're like okay good for you right right we we got to get to the bottom of this. I'll use my investigative <laughs> it's skills a wild to story. find out. It's it's, it's, it's wild, honestly, it's I story. saw this and I was like, no. Yeah. I was like, they're fucking with us. This can't be true. I wish them the best. I do wish them the best. Yeah. And I and by the way, we don't like family feuds and family drama. Like that's not to me. That's not cool. Families should be close. I'm incredibly lucky to be close with my future sister-in-law and her whole family. So I do hope that her and Hannah don't have beef, but it sounds a little fishy. We so. don't always like, I have a large family and I, I won't give a lot of detail, but like you don't always love the people they pick, you know, and Correct. you just have to accept it. I know. And you make it work and you're just like, fuck. I know. But to share a common ex, like that's, that's dirty. <laughs> That's not cool. That's different. Well, than they don't really <laughs> share an ex. That's what's so bizarre about it. You're like, what's the, you know, right. it's her. Br it's so I know. Yeah. We need a diet, like a Venn diagram in front of us. For a family yeah, tree. Like a I'm very confused. I'm like, what are they? Like, are they, what, like, what do you call that? If they had a sense of humor. Mm -hmm. If I don't know if anyone in this story has a sense of humor, mm -hmm. but if they did, they have Jed play at their wedding. No. <laughs> I think it'd be great. Just let mm. bygones be bygones. Notice the three women here were like, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I think it'd be great. But I mean, this is how we start rumors, but you heard it here first. My friend saw Hannah out and about and she looked sad. <laughs> I'm totally making nothing. I'm I making something say, out of those nothing. Those are my least favorite rumors of oh, like. I know. Who's, I shouldn't who, be doing that. God That's only not what knows I do. what could have been going on in Hannah Brown's mind when her friend, your friend, saw her look sad. <laughs> I look sad all the time. I look sad all the time. Even when I'm like happy, people are like, "What's wrong?" I'm like, "What are you talking about?" I know. By the way, uh, for the record, I want to say that was a joke. I'm not I, starting I, a rumor. I, and again, she just did a fabulous interview with us. Her book is great. I just we need to know more. Hannah, please write more. Tell us what happened. Tell us about your brother's How engagement. How much do you hate Haley? <laughs> we need to know. On a scale of 1 to 10. Is it 11? That would be a good promotable piece for, I mean, the next Not season of the- Not following each other. You can follow. I don't like everyone I follow on Instagram. Right. I mean, but, I but not following is a statement. Not following is something. It's a statement. I, I comment. I support. I like pictures. I'm like people I'm like not even a super fan right. of. But like, you know what? I'll just, and she's going out of her way to be like, no, nah, I'm not following you. I know. Like You're that. right. You're right. Yeah. We got to know. That's what we want. We need like an after the final rose, but a special, just like Jed, Hannah, family tree. <laughs> What's really going on? Uh, so much bachelor tea. I mean, I guess so we, much we have to get, we, I think yeah, we need to get we to, talk about the, finale? to the finale. <laughs> uh, you know, it's okay. Cause we have Brandon coming in. People yes. will be tuning into that episode. And I'm sure Brandon will give us uh, a lot of the tea. I mean, like, what's what's to talk about here? I mean, I think we all started this episode knowing it was going to be Nate, mm -hmm. thinking it was going to be Nate, Michelle. You know, we spent a lot of time last episode discussing the dynamics. Like, we, we recapped last week, like, assuming she's picking Nate, right? And so we had the discussions of how fascinating it was to have a bachelorette like Michelle, so thoughtful and self-aware and someone who talks openly about like learning from the past and mistakes and again who knows about the edit but the the edit of nate was michelle going down the path of what she's familiar some familiar with of what she wants not necessarily what she needs you know you got the warnings from the mom and nate's stepdad and yeah afr they did the casual like oh just kidding everyone likes each other and we support this and like you know what do we want to believe what's true um you know you weren't here last week to talk about it what what are your overall thoughts on not necessarily i mean obviously we're rooting for nate and michelle and congratulations to the happy couple uh but while you were watching it uh, what were your opinions about Michelle's kind of thought process as she was going through her final three and got to her final two and then ended up with Nate? So, first of all, as you said, congrats to the happy couple. 
Um, I'm interviewing them very soon, so I'm excited to to chat with them. So I will say that my feelings for them as a couple grew a lot more in the finale and then the episode prior because they look really, really happy together. And on AFR, like, I believed that happiness. Now, we've seen people be happy before, and then we, you know, things change. But they seemed incredibly happy. I, I do think that he seemed a bit immature in my eyes. On the show. On the show. But then, as we got to know him more, I really loved him. But here's my main issue, which I think is working against him being Nate, but also everyone on the show, is the main question and the doubt that was being cast on him was, is he ready to be engaged? And why does it have to be an engagement? You know, I love The Bachelor franchise. If there's one thing I want it to change, but then I know it's not like the big splashy ending we all want, is why does it have to be an engagement? Can't like, if they eliminated that, and if it was just (laughs) Nate and Michelle end up together, then there wouldn't even be that question and people wouldn't be doubting him. Correct. Because that's crazy. You do get the free ring out of it. You You know, like if I was on the fence, like you do get the Neil Lane ring. And so it's like, might as well like give it a shot and see if you keep the diamond. (laughs) Great Uh, point. I I honestly think most people like, and no disrespect to Neil, love Neil, love your jewelry. You're a legend, Neil Lang. Um, You're just not thinking about the free ring. If you're you're just like... But great point. Like if I don't have to get engaged um like you're you're comfortable like just dating i think i can speak for most people that like no one pressures you but there's pressure i don't know how else to say it um but um but you're right and it's just one of those things that we were talking about while we're watching it you know and the past couple seasons that we've seen the non-engagement but the possibility of engagement and having michelle get engaged and getting back to like what the show has been about, even though they're in recent seasons, there's been these non-engagements is Mm -hmm. it gives stakes in the final episode. I mean, Mm -hmm. this episode wasn't about who she's going to pick. Let's be honest. It was about will, will Nate and Michelle be happy at the end? Like what will Nate say to make Michelle feel more comfortable? Interesting enough, like when they were, we were talking about this, like also it does put Nate in a tough position. Like we've been kind of tough on him the past couple episodes, you know, like I didn't really understand, even though like it seemed to work for Michelle and it was everything she was waiting Mm -hmm. to hear. But Nate's like, like I said, I brought two suits, (laughs) you know, and I'm like, and she's like, that's what I was waiting to hear. (laughs) I was like, all right, well, this fits for the paddle boarding like theme of like, you just like, I, I'm shocked you have two suits, paddleboard guy. Right. You know? Right. Totally. He's like, I just, I didn't know what to expect, but I'm here. It's like one of them's a wetsuit. You know? But I I will say, I really believe that he was falling in love. And in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with not having been in love before. So if he is falling in love with Michelle, I think that's great. And then I think there was so much pressure put on, well, are you ready to get engaged? Are you ready to get married? So when you're being asked that question, he has has to think about it. And of course, he's going to say yes. But in the real world, you'd be a psycho if you proposed to someone after six or seven weeks. So I'm team Nate. Like, I believe that he was falling in love with her. And then when he's asked the question, he's like, well, yeah, this very moment, like, yes, I think I do want to marry her. But it's been like a few weeks. Plus, when you get asked those questions, especially in that in that world, like you said, like these questions are presented, whether it's a producer or even the family members or just yourself, given what you agreed to go on. It's like, are you ready? Because if you're not, you're going to burn in hell. You know, like it's framed in as as if like you have to defend your like honor as a human being. It's like you're defending yourself for not being like psychotic and for being sane. You're like, if I brought a guy home. Of course I'm ready for marriage. Why wouldn't I be ready for marriage? Like, what are you saying? I'm like, you know, and so it's. If I brought a guy home to my parents after a few weeks, and my parents would never be like, well, are you ready to propose? They'd be like, you're proposing. <laughs> They'd be like, hold on. We like you. Pump the brakes. Yeah. It's like, I, I, uh, you know, Brandon, like first day, like he's in her dad's like swimsuits. And he's like, is it a cool if I like marry your daughter? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. By the way, my favorite thing is I should have had my dad watch tonight. My My dad is unfortunately not a regular Bachelor viewer. But when I have had him watch with me, 
it is so fun. Like there should be an after show called like Parents, middle aged yeah, dads yeah, watching yeah. The Bachelor. <laughs> First of all, my dad predicts the winner every single time. He predicts who the villain's gonna be. He spot on, but um, no, but look, bringing it all back to them at this moment, I really do believe that they are so into each other. They seem super happy. I thought Michelle, we were talking about this. She was such a breath of fresh air. She, to me, really, I hate to use this phrase, but really seemed to be there all for the right reasons. I did not think that she was doing this for the fame. I didn't think she was doing this for the Instagram following. I feel like she is just a class act. She's so elegant. By the way, had the best wardrobe mm. out of any bachelorette. Stunning. Except also, Taisha. Taisha had great wardrobe in her season. But I mean, Michelle, like the dress that she wore, I guess two episodes ago with the cutouts, like the blue gown with the cutouts. All the jewel tones oh were like so fantastic. Shout out to the wardrobe department. They yeah. must have upped the budget this season. I mean, <laughs> like, it certainly like was different than last season. I mean, she. I mean, she is a stunning woman, but yeah. the styling was great. But no, I am a fan of Michelle. I am not going to name names. I didn't love a more recent season of The Bachelorette. You, you so didn't love Katie's season. It's I did fun. not, <laughs> and I really loved Michelle's season. Well, we were talking about this before, mm -hmm. right? Like, and people have talked about, uh, like, I, we love Michelle. I, it's been a breath of fresh air to watch and to cover. But people like the critics, not necessarily about Michelle, is like they people. Some people have said this is a boring season, right? It's just, and I guess technically you could argue that it, it has been because Michelle is not your atypical bachelorette. She is more self confident and and, and thoughtful, and she doesn't react. She's slow to react. Mm -hmm. They love a bachelorette who's quick to react. It's, mm -hmm. be it's better TV, you right. know. Being a boring TV is often a compliment. To totally. you as a human being, right? Totally. Um, like, I would want to be Michelle's friend in real life. Yeah. Can't say that for every lead of this franchise, but I loved watching their season. Totally. And Michelle's season, it's it, like, it, it's been, you know, and again, this show, we, we often, like, not only do we cover the uh, the Bachelorette or the Bachelor, but we spend more of our time talking about relationship dynamics and, mm -hmm. and learning about how we can communicate and um, all, the, all those things. And, uh, and and so it was nice to have a bachelorette like Michelle to like give us some like thoughtful takeaways about relationships and what we've learned and watching it back. We were talking about like comparing the past two seasons, like Katie's season in general was kind of toxic. Also like wild to watch, but like it had a very, there are a lot of conversations about toxicity. Right. And, and this season was like, just calming and mm -hmm. nice and we had a final four of like just some great guys and we're just we're rooting for all of them mm -hmm. we had, you know we, we were rooting for roddy we're rooting yes. for joe we're rooting for brandon and, and nate and like we had to like find things to be like and maybe nate's a fuck boy or brandon's too young but we were we were really no, reaching you're right. you're right in terms of like which is kind of nice it is kind of nice and i do think i mean at least in recent memory her final four this was the classiest bunch i can remember. I mean, even when they were heartbroken and being sent home, like when you saw Joe being sent home, he was devastated, but he was so respectful of her feelings and he was so mindful of her feelings and her happiness. And the same with Rodney. And I, by the way, I was heartbroken. I loved Rodney. Um, but it, like, I truly, this sounds so cheesy, but I'm like, I truly can't wait to read the story given that these people will continue to be of public interest i can't wait to read the story when i hear that they've all found their match and that they're getting married you know i can't wait for they're like bachelor. In their love story. yeah well i just think that they're all great guys and and respectful and and i do i i hear what some people are saying that this was a more calm season but I think for a franchise that has gone on for this long it's good to we have the it. ups and downs yeah, we needed it you know like sure. not every season can be a train wreck and i mean that is a compliment like yeah. you can't be glued to your tv because all of the craziness every season you need some calming more realistic leads as yeah. well and like listen katie season was fun to watch it was also like toxic kind of. and exhausting i i it was, I was exhausted it was fun to recap it also exhausting too yes. right yes and so but to your point the i think the balance is needed i couldn't handle that another season like that and it was a breath of fresh air by the way i'm still shocked that katie and blake broke up 
I really thought that they would make it for at least a bit longer. I thought that they would make it when they got engaged. Mm-hmm. But I can't, you know. No. No, we don't have to talk about that, but just a little side note. Um, now, we all love Michelle. Yes. But, but I do want to ask a question because mm-hmm. you know, as often as asked on these, and what happens in the finale is the word love is thrown around. And then we start, you know, once the lead makes a decision, it's kind of like, can you be in love with two people? Michelle infusively said the morning after her fantasy suite with Nate, I'm in love with you. And that was a really nice moment. And we're also filming a TV show, keep in mind, right? So uh, when they capture a great moment, the, again, is the, what the producers are good at is adapting. It's not scripted, it's structured, it's sometimes very staged, but they, they create a world and they let it play out and they really don't know what's gonna happen. So here is Michelle, the bachelorette who wakes up and on camera the morning off, she's like, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking in love with you, I, mm-hmm. I love you. And that was the first time Michelle told Nate mm-hmm. she's in love with them. And I'm pretty sure that they were like, not our favorite thing that happened right there. Mm-hmm. But we gotta show it. Right. now. Michelle, we have a problem. Mm-hmm. You just said the guy that you're going to pick that you're in love with him. So, right. how do you feel about Brandon? Right, exactly. Are you in love with him too? Right. He's a pretty good guy. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you're in love with him, right? You know? And I, I have no idea if that happened. Right. But I do know that, like, the question is, and so your Michelle's put in a position to try to justify her feelings for Brandon, every lead is, by the time she gets to someone like Brandon, has a ton of respect and feelings, but I just I just don't think you can be in love with two people. And Michelle's put in a position to, you know, I don't know what you want to call it, but do you, do you think you can be in love with two people? Because I can buy, I love two people, I respect right. two people, I care about two people, mm-hmm. I'm falling in love with two people, but in love? And if you can, does that dilute the intensity of the feelings you of the person you end up with? I think so. So I was going to say that I do think that you can love two people, but you cannot be in love. But I think this show creates a world where you are in this bubble of filming and emotions are running at an all time high. And I could see just these emotions like going haywire and you have this really great moment because you know better than me but you actually it's a matter of hours that you're with each person so if you're with this person it's like one thing can kind of flip flip everything so if you have this great moment you're like oh my god i'm in love with you and then you could also feel the pressure to have to say it to someone else but no i do not think that you actually really can be in love with two people at the same time. And I do think that it muddies the strength of the feelings. Like if I were watching this back, I would be really sad if I was like, wait, you told me that you love me, but you just told someone else that you love me. Like I would feel really bad about that. You know, though, I will say, you know, our strengths are often our weaknesses. Our weaknesses are often our strengths. Mm -hmm. And the past couple episodes, we've been lightly critical of Nate and like potential fuckboy characteristics to maybe just like may uh, like you know, like maybe just carefree mm-hmm. this life. However, in this particular situation that you bring up, I think Nate makes the perfect partner. You know, like Sean Booth was not a chill guy. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I think Caitlin had to do some maneuvering. <laughs> I love how it all comes back to Sean. <laughs> I just, uh, By the it, way, Nick, you have a bone to pick. <laughs> it just came up. Like, I'm just like, it, just it resonated. Yes, nowhere, I, yeah. No, he's fine. But like in the moment, he wasn't a chill guy. And right. again, like say what you want. Like I, I, Caitlin was responsible for her choices, but like mm-hmm. for three years, like Caitlin and I, she, Caitlin was not allowed to have a relationship with me. That's not like normal. Right. Right. And right. my point is, and listen, it's fine. I, a lot of people can empathize with Sean or a lot of people who like, and like, as you just pointed out, mm-hmm. what would be a hard thing to hear? And yet Nate is a guy who comes across as like, he doesn't seem to sweat the small stuff. Big Nate doesn't sweat the small stuff. Yeah. By the way, so tall. Yeah. So tall. When he proposed and got down, we were saying this, I was like, oh my God, he got down on one knee and he was like almost as tall as Michelle on his knee. But now going back to what you were saying, I, what I actually really loved about Nate, again, I didn't like that he was being attacked that's probably too strong of a word but for not being potentially ready to propose and i agree with you that actually speaks to the fact that there wasn't really anything wrong to say about him it's like you were searching for something but what i did love with him 
is we were kind of seeing like this little boy energy of someone falling in love for the first time. Like he had this enthusiasm and he seemed so excited and it seemed so genuine. It just felt like he was discovering all these feelings for the first time. And I really believed that as a viewer. Totally. Like, honestly, it's his stepdad really fucked it up for him. Because if it weren't for his stepdad being like, I know this guy and he's not ready. I know. Like, By the way, yeah, I took issue with that. I would be so pissed yeah. if you found out that your stepdad went behind but your also, back like, and maybe- did that. <laughs> Listen, maybe he's not wrong, and who knows what will happen with Nate and and Michelle and every relationship that starts in Bachelor Nation, the odds are stacked against you. So, like, I know. you know, a variety and and many publications we cover inclusivity and representation and how much it matters. And I do have to say, it was a very big deal to finally see that the final four men were all men of color. Is this, and this the first? This is the first winning couple yeah, that is two black couple. people. Yes, two people of color. And I, I mean, it's just, it matters. You know, it's easy to kind of gloss over that, but to see these love stories represented on TV in general, we're not seeing many black love stories, certainly not as many as white stories. So I- How many total seasons of The Bachelor and Bachelorette have there been? I don't even know. There's, well, this was season, I know this because I write like headlines after write season, blah, blah, blah. This was season 18 of Bachelorette and Clayton season coming up, which I'm very excited for, is season 26. So there's been a lot, a lot of seasons. But and this, this is the first. But, but this is a like TV and film wide problem, by the way. You know, sure. this is an industry wide problem. Yeah. And I actually, you know, I want to give a, like I'm giving kudos. Like I think it's a really big deal um, and I spoke to Michelle a bit about representation in my first interview with her before her season airing and just what it means to hold this title and to have this platform. And even though it's a question that's asked over and over again, it was something that she was really proud of. You know, she's like, I am very proud that little girls who look like me can be at home and can watch a love story really transpire to millions of viewers. So it is a big deal. And it is something that we should still shout out and we need to continue to see more of it. Let's talk a little, Brandon. What, um, obviously, welcome to the club, Brandon, by the way. Yeah. Winner of club. Oh. What's your advice? Welcome well, no, you. I can't spoil that. You're about to talk to him. That was a real cry. It was a real cry. Yeah, that, that's my biggest takeaway. And um, I haven't seen a real cry like that since Blake. And before Blake, uh, myself. Now, Brandon, my, my real cry wasn't on camera. And so it's possible, but like, there's a lot of runner ups. I just, I don't buy it. Mm-hmm. And by buy it, I'm like, I'm sure they like them and I know they're sad, but like, you know, they're going to be fine. But Brendan was broken. He was. Uh, and, and I believed that. Like, I believed those emotions. He was another one that grew on me. I mean, I, not that, I mean, I never had anything bad to say about him, but I thought he was. I, this is a compliment to Michelle and not a diss to him. So I don't want to come off this way, but she's just such an impressive woman to me that I just thought that she was kind of out of his league. I thought that he seemed kind of like a little boy next to a strong woman. But then at the end, I was like, oh my gosh, you are really, I mean, really heartbroken. And my heart, like it, it, it broke for him. I, I believed it. So I correct myself. And he grew on me a lot. Okay. Yeah, I, I had mean, the he same... has a boyish look. I mean... He, yeah, and that's not his fault. Like, just because he has a baby face, he's adorable. It's it, not his fault. I had the exact same thought where at first I thought he was a little bit too, like, puppy love with Michelle. But it's like, Nick, it goes back to the point that you hit home a lot, which is that, like, people's best moment on the show is when they get eliminated. Because it was so impressive to see Brandon face that kind of immense disappointment and handle that with so much, like, class and kindness and compassion. Well broken. Yeah. I yeah, agree. hard to do. You do learn the most about people at their worst moments. Yeah. And Brandon, I mean, like, I think we were pretty hard on him, like, out of the limo. I mean, he gave kind of some fuckboy energy, too. Like, because I remember he came out on, in a bed and was like, I just want you to know what it's like to wake up next to me. And I was like, mm-hmm. how about you want to know what it's like to wake up next, ne- right. next to her? See, you know, what I'm saying. Thing. But he grew on me. But, re- yeah, I mean... That is not the the Brandon I expected to be incredibly thoughtful and grandiose mm-hmm. and just 
a, a true romantic. I, you yes. know, he did say uh, an AFR and I, what I want to ask him about it. He was just like, I don't usually talk this way. And he did not come across as a man who, who he just walked in the, in the studio. So now we're talking about him. Can he hear us out there? <laughs> Probably. Uh, we're talking about you. <laughs> he, he did not. Uh, he seems like he knows what he's talking about. Um, so we'll have to ask him about that. Yes. What other questions do we should we ask well, Brennan? Well, I actually have a question for you because you were talking about how you were one of the only real criers, um, even though you say we didn't see that moment. My big cry wasn't on camera. Right. Yeah. So here's my question. Obviously, the emotions on the show are real, but they're also expedited and heightened because you have all these cameras around you and you know that you have to make a decision and you know that you want to be chosen. So I'm curious. Nick, like how long did it take you to get over that moment? Like when you were outside of this world, were you like, wow, that cry and those feelings were real and genuine. I was broken because of this person. Or was it all like, oh, this was like a crazy kind of world that I was in? Well, it happened to me twice. There are two different experiences. The first Which one, one was the real the real cry. Which one are you referring to? Andy's, it was a real cry. Mm -hmm. I was just so like broken. Yeah. And I was like my world. I had no, like with Caitlin's, it was different. I was a little more angry because of like the history we had. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I was like, send me home mm -hmm. whenever you know it's right. not me like i'm not here like i just it's cool to send me home and mm -hmm. like i was you know again we've talked about this she did me a favor uh, mm -hmm. but i didn't appreciate it in the moment but uh and with andy it was harder to get over because the producers fucked with me afterwards i was like i gotta get over it and they were like me i think she's still into you and they tried to get me to come down to mexico and like they were making me think like she was like questioning her decision mm -hmm. it was like not cool yeah uh, yeah like there was things i wasn't thrilled about that they did and that, that was definitely one of them mm -hmm. um you know so it yeah. it uh, i was just curious it dragged out. after after afr i was like once the season was done rapping, but from the time of AFR, from the time of rapping and filming, I was mm -hmm. still with Andy. I was still very much a mess just because they kept making me think that there might be a shot. There was a chance, yeah. Uh, and then when Caitlin and I broke up, I was like, she made her choice. I, I I gave it my all. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah, I, clean. Clean breaks are always easier. Yeah, I, always. I, it was like it, it took me a couple weeks to like shake it, but. Mm -hmm. I wasn't with Caitlin. I wasn't like, I wasn't thinking about the past. I wasn't wondering mm -hmm. the what ifs and what, why, you know, it was just like, I got my answer. I need to move on. Yeah. But it's tough. Yeah. I was just curious to get your perspective, like now looking back, because maybe you'll share that with, yeah, maybe. with our, we'll, we'll see how he's feeling. <laughs> he has no idea what we're talking about. Can, can he hear us? <laughs> he can, can hear us. Okay. Hear yeah. Us? yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> Big fans. <laughs> All right, before we let you go, uh, you've interviewed Clayton. We've mm -hmm. been tough on the Clayton selection. I still think it's going to be an entertaining season to watch. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? Uh, you've met Clayton. How do you think it's going to be? Uh, I know Rob Mills, friend of show, uh, who was part of the selection process, uh, believes in Clayton. He what was about tweeting you? us about this he tonight. I think us. that's what you're referring to. So, okay. So first of all, I, I cover, I'm a fan of The Bachelor, but I also cover it for us at Variety, which means that I, you know, get inside scoop and I report on it. So from the time that Clayton was selected um, and we were one of the outlets that broke that story right away, I was hearing from people that the producers just fell in love with him and like he was a great guy. So when I hear that from my sources, I'm like, okay, like there's obviously something here that they chose him for. So I was already interested in learning about him. But so yes, I just interviewed him. It was on Zoom. So I haven't met him in person because COVID protocols. But I have to say, and this is not to say anything bad about past leads, but I've been covering the show for a while. I interview every single lead, both prior to their season airing and then at the end after their finale. And you can tell a lot about the person. Of course, it's a rather short interview and it's, you know, they're trained for what they can say because they can't give away spoilers. You can still tell a lot about a person. He was one of the nicest guys and so genuine that I've ever interviewed from the franchise. And I had such a good time talking to him. We were joking around from the second that I got on the Zoom interview. He was so warm, so welcoming, um, just a really polite guy, seems very real, which I appreciated. 
I did ask him, I was like, so you kind of broke the rules, buddy. Like, why did you tell three girls that, you know, you love them? We were just talking about this with Michelle and he, I'm going to tease it, but he gave a good answer and my interview isn't up yet. Okay. So here's my shameless be sure, plug. Be sure to check it out. I, um, I, yes. I will say I have heard that uh, he's a nice guy and like he is, he like in a Ben Higgins kind of like just in a genuine way, he takes the time to really make everyone he meets feel noticed. Yes. Right. He, seen. Yes. And I think that's a, a quality that not everyone possesses. Right. But also and good for the bachelor. Yeah. But also like as a reporter, I hate to say this, but like we can smell when it's bullshit. Right. Like we know like, oh, like you're not actually like this person. You're just being polite because I'm a reporter and you want me to do a good interview with you. He really seemed very genuine. So I am an initial fan of his. I'm excited for a season. Um, it, I mean, it looks great. We were talking about like the drama looks looks so good. I think it's going to be fun to watch. I, I'm yeah. excited. I'm very, all for it. Very catty. I am and after all for a it. very level headed season with Michelle, I'm ready to bring back the toxicity. We're, there you go. Like, let's, See, it can't all be level headed. We got to have some drama and some cat fights. Uh, Elizabeth, always a pleasure. Uh, always please a pleasure. come back uh, for Clayton season. Yes, I would Great. love to. Wonderful. I'll see you uh, in 2022. Uh, I know you mentioned your interview with Clayton, but also please uh, let the people know everything else you're doing. Yes. So you can check out the interview with Clayton. Also, my interview with Michelle and Nate on Variety.com. And then you can follow me at E Wagmeister. That is my social handle for all social platforms. And we have a new show at Variety called The Take. That is where Clayton's interview will be featured. And we've got to get you on there, Nick. Let me know. Okay. You're invited to the take and I'm invited back here. All right. See you soon. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. Uh, be sure to keep listening uh, or looking for our interview with Brennan that we'll, we'll be conducting as soon as we kick Elizabeth the hell out of here. Uh, but no, all seriousness, we love uh, you having you here. It's been great. Thanks for listening, guys. Don't forget also to send in your questions at asknick at castme.com, cast with a K for Ask Nick episodes every Monday. <laughs> and other than that, we'll see you in a few. Hey guys, thanks for watching, but before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss any future videos like our Monday's Ask Nick, especially if you're looking for some relationship stories and relationship advice, as well as our Wednesday interviews with your favorite celebrities and experts. See you next time.